Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Good everyone, uh, it's Phil Tarrant here. How are you going? Uh, portfolio update time. Uh, we didn't do one last month. A couple of reasons why. Number one, we haven't really done much, so I didn't feel like it was a necessary. Number two, I've uh, actually spent a bit of time um, on holidays over August, which was quite cool. So uh, I was only offers for two weeks of the month, so um, I didn't prioritise doing a portfolio update because I was waiting for something to happen. But I think this show, portfolio update, is maybe going to be a bit of like a, a show on Seinfeld, a show about nothing either. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Steve Waters in the studio with me. We're going to talk about a portfolio. He's from Right Property Group. Uh, he joins me every now and then to chat through uh, what we're doing with our portfolio. And Steve, we're doing nothing, but we're sort of doing stuff though. You're we? maintaining. You're in a holding pattern. We're in a holding pattern. And we'll get, we'll get into that because I think it's an important point. Last time we got together, obviously a whole bunch of moving parts. We're looking at proving the cash flow position of our portfolio. This is even more pressing considering the current market. There's lots going on. Yep. And- I spoke a lot about this uh, in our portfolio. Go and check it out, smartproperinvestment.com.au slash our portfolio, I think is where you can find it. The way we see the world in terms of reporting our portfolio is that we look at it warts and all, don't we, Steve? It's it's absolutely fully costed of what costs us to hold this asset over time. And you have to. Everything. You have yep. to do it. Yep. A lot of people try and, you know. Smoke and mirrors. Uh, smoke make and mirrors, them, yeah, yeah. Make themselves feel better make about Make themselves feel better about it. Yeah, yep. but we include everything like trust fees, accountants fees, land, land, tax. trust, land taxes, at least half the cost in our portfolio because we get no uh, land tax breaks um, uh, because we invest in a trust. Even in uh, one of the trusts we have where we have some of our Queensland assets, like we're over the, the threshold in that as well. So we're copping land tax up in, in Queensland. So we, we're copping all over the front, but this is just cost the, of business. the cost of business, right? Um, and before we come on air, we, I sort of spoke really briefly about how I was, I was looking at my super fund. I've got a, a retail super fund. I've spoken about it before. It's with a, a large uh, retail fund. I think I've mentioned it beforehand when I've been annoyed about it, but I'm not going to talk, talk about it in particular today. But had a pretty reasonable return, FY18, I think got 8% of my money. The year before, I got about 6%. The year before that, I got 0.1%, right, uh, which I was pretty beefed about, and I think I spoke about it at some point in time, whinging and complaining. And, and that sort of has helped orchestrate me to set up my own self-managed super fund, which I have done. Uh, I've set up the bank accounts, which I've done, but I haven't done anything else. But you haven't right? done anything, haven't done anything else. But this is not about – this This is sort of my, my personal portfolio. This is not the smart property investment portfolio. But I was looking at my fund the other day, right, because I'm looking to roll over the cash into the super fund so I can do some stuff with it. And it cost me – about four and a half grand a year to to hold my retail fund. So that is the fees I pay to the fund management company that manages it for me for the privilege of them managing my money. And and last year they gave me eight percent, right? Yeah, that's great. That's slightly sarcastic, right? But four and a half thousand dollars it cost me to hold this asset. And the asset that I hold in, in the size of the value is much smaller than the total cost or the value of any of the properties in, for example, yeah. the Smart Property Investment. So it's a smaller asset size. cost me $4,500 a year to hold it. I look at the Smart Property Investment portfolio that we report on and, um, you know, it does have holding costs uh, because of how it's structured and uh, the strategy we've had in building that asset around equity growth um, and now we're looking at the cash flow position. But it's cheaper for me, probably half the price for me to hold each individual property in the smart property investment portfolio than what it is to actually have my money in a in a retail fund. With the benefit of leverage. With the benefit of leverage. Mm-hmm. And so I'm getting at best eight percent. If I if I average that out over the last three years, I'm probably getting two percent less. Um, whereas I'm getting the leverage on investing in property uh, at half the price of holding costs and I'm probably quadrupling I don't even know what five times thing is, you know, five hundred percent better return than what I'm getting on my on my super fund. So is it okay to think of things that way, do you reckon? I do, because I'm very much numbers driven mm. uh, and I try to work things down to the micro cent if, if I can, uh, because I always want my money working for me. And if it's working better over there or over here, it's about money management and continually moving it to get the best return on, on investment. Yeah. And I'm not going to beat up super. I think um, there's a place for it. There's a place for it. Mm. Um, and uh, I hold some insurance in that super fund, so that's all cool. Yeah, but the return I get at compared to investing in property is... And it's something that you don't feel in control of. No. Because you have no say in it. I sometimes feel like walking into this fund manager X, retail fund X, um, and grabbing the CEO by the scruff of the neck and beating him up saying, mate, get your people to do their job properly because you're not performing right now, you know. A handful of people making money out of super, not us uh, struggling Australian journalists, Steve. <laughs> I'm just looking at the facial expressions here as you get worked up. 
It's just, yeah, I try not to avoid, I, I try not to think about it too much sometimes. But you know what? I haven't done anything about it, though. It's yeah, still so you're partly there. responsible. I'm partly responsible yeah. for it. Absolutely. Anyway, but that's sort of that, – this is my self-rationalisation about the holding costs with the Smart Property Investment portfolio. Yes, it, it costs us money to hold it, and we share those numbers and go check it out on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. But it's getting better because we're going through this process of of uh, reassessing our mortgage rates, fixing some some loans, you know, taking some costs out of it. Uh, so it's looking a lot better right now, but you know banks are up in rates as well right yeah, now. Yeah, you know I got a whole bunch of letters the other day of uh, banks uh, deciding to do out of cycle rate rises, and uh, which was always going to happen. And mm. I think anyone who thought it wasn't was, yeah, you know, just living under a rock. Yeah, so it's getting even more expensive to hold it because of interest rates going up. Uh, we tried to mitigate that a little bit by fixing some rates. Um, which is cool. Yep, smart you know, move. Yep. Smart move, and and uh, that's working for us. And I highly recommend uh, having an assessment of your own portfolio if that sounds familiar. You might have some stuff coming off interest only stuff as well. So and you that's know, the big one. Yeah, that's uh, because that will add 30, 40, 50 percent to the repayment mm. bottom line, uh, whereas a percent in increase in in rates wouldn't have that same cash flow effect, so to speak. So I, I think having that or being in touch with your numbers is, is where the gold is. Mm especially at this point or any time, but right now uh, with the falling off a cliff scenario of going over to P&I, it's, it's very important. Are you seeing that much with uh, other people you work with? They, is there a genuine concern about moving to P&I rather than interest only? For, Look, there's for a concern. I wouldn't call it a genuine concern because you know we'd like to think that most of the investors are savvy enough to have done their numbers mm. uh, and knowing that this point in time is coming up. So they've put in the necessary measures in terms of cash flow management um, buffers, but also making the right moves well in advance of having the pressure on you before you roll over into P&I. So if that means switching lenders uh, or whatever it may be, um, then usually 12 months beforehand was the smart move. Mm. So what's your overall sentiments for our portfolio at the moment? It's just business as usual, really? We're not well, really- it is. And yeah, we we expect the ups and downs of cash flow as rates go up or you know, roll over into P&Is, whatever it may be. But it's all factored beforehand. Like you're not going into this with no upper ceiling in terms of affordability and what you can hold on to and what you can't, because you're not you're a numbers man. You run businesses and mm. your your portfolio is a business as well. And so the modelling that you've done has given you a very clear picture as where you're going. And I think that's a key. Yeah, and we'll continue to do it. And you know, we're not in a rush at the moment to to add. To that's the, the point, um, though. Yeah. yeah, there's there's there should never be a rush no matter what the position is it's mm. it's capitalizing on an opportunity when you can and or executing the opportunity when you can and for that to happen there's got to be finance in place there's got to be capital and there's also got to be the bandwidth in terms of cash flow to be able to support the next property yeah and we don't even have a pre-approval you know so our, no. our buying intent is, is not there at the moment especially today's market yeah absolutely so I'm, I'm i'm satisfied with that position right now i think um um some opportunities are going to start coming up in the market. They uh, will. We, we don't really know and, and you know, that's within the context. And if you're keeping abreast of what the media is banging on around these days, uh, it would appear that property markets are going to fall through the floor and everyone's going to go bust. Australia's going to go broke because yeah. um, our financial system is backed and based very much on the lending of mortgages with the big four banks. So when property goes down 30 40%, that means all the banks are going to start – you know, trying to get their money back, which is going to call cripple, on loans, cripple yeah. call on loans, is going to cripple property prices. So everyone's going to be impacted by it, including the banks. And uh, you know, when you think of the the potential outcome of that, if you believe of what you hear, um, if the Australian banks fail, the Australian economy will fail, and Australia as a nation and our GDP growth and development will fail. So it is Correct. a big, it's deal. a big call, and I love the way that some of these people make these big calls and. Mm. I was reading this morning, I think, uh, on the ABC, which I probably shouldn't do, uh, that they're comparing our banking system to that of what uh, America the American was prior banking to the, system, yeah, prior yeah. to the GFC. And like, there's just no it was non recourse lending and yeah. all this sort of stuff. You know, people just I can't afford my thing anymore. Here you go. Here's the key. So thing. to make a statement like that, their credibility for me is 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 it's, nothing. It's irresponsible journalism, to be 100%. fair. Hundred percent. You know, trying to sensationalise this situation. Uh, the Australian banking system is built a lot stronger than what the American banking system was prior to the GFC. Yeah, mm. Fundamentally different. Yeah. Fundamentally different. And um, my view is that um, 
you know, a lot of people say it's too big to fail, right? Um, you know, the economic factors which might drive a huge downturn in property prices, a lot of it is based on scaremongering and, and misaligned or ill-informed opinions who are cultivating this stuff. Agenda, you know, perhaps. Agenda, perhaps. But you got to remember, you know, we just ticked over 25 million people in, in, in Australia, and I think that's a, a generation before it was supposed to happen, right? You Correct. have massive population growth. Sydney and Melbourne are huge global. They're, they're huge cities on a they're global world class cities. The world class city, you know. So, so you, if we look at all those numbers, so we've just cracked twenty five million. Hmm. It's a, as you say, it's a major feat, huge, and well ahead of its time. Yeah, um, we've got growing consumer confidence. Having said that, this might erode some of it in terms of the housing market. We've got low inflation. We've got low cost of money. We've got jobs growth that are starting to emulate and we've also got wage growth that's just starting to show signs of of growth some green shoots if you will mm. the consumer confidence from a from a uh, from a business level is actually quite high and that's going to hopefully spurn on jobs growth and what have you so there's a whole trickle on effect there yes the 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 media that is surrounding the housing at the moment they're generalizing saying it's the whole real estate market mm. yeah you know, they're not even identifying it as just purely residential or industrial or commercial or, or whatever agriculture whatever it may be but they're also not dialing all the way back down into Sydney and then in Melbourne for that matter and then specific areas of yeah I, I just irresponsible journalism mm. at its best is and I think that's really well put by you and I think that once it gets its own life which it's starting to now and it'll self-perpetuate mm. We'll see what happens. You know, if you this is the first property update we've done since the leadership spill. We have our well, that's another new yeah. a new prime minister Scott Morrison has uh, taken over the reins from um, uh, Malcolm Turnbull. And you know, if you listen to the this skullduggery of politics down in Canberra within the Canberra bubble, it's all about you know what the promises are. And uh, you know, the, the Liberal government is reporting, you know. GDP growth, job growth, uh, huge uh, increases in company profits. Mm. Um, so all really good economic indicators. Your Labor government talks about the slowest period of, of wage growth in in, uh, in in decades. So, you know, there's pros and cons. There's half full, half empty. There's black and white, however you want to look at it, right? Um, all this noise, all this Negative gearing thing. Negative gearing. gearing. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, that. who you listen to, how, how bad is the consumer sentiment right now? You know, it's going to still be driven by sentiment. So, and and, and I say that based on the, the, the smart property investment portfolio. Um, you know, we, we, we've created this portfolio in, in, in a sort of public persona so people can actually see what we're doing. And I'm happy to share with, you know, the idea of it is um, just how we see the world and, and how we are reacting to all this stuff that's going on. And, and my view of it is I can't do anything about it. Hundred percent correct. I just can't do anything about it. I, I know about it. I'm informed about it, and I can have opinions about it. But it's not really much I can do. You know, um, where can I be proactive? Well, I can know what interest rates I'm paying right now. What can I do about that? I can look to um, either extend my interest only rates by doing something right now, or I can fix my rates for a period of time. So there is some, you know, um, cards tricks up my sleeve that I can use to to influence the outcome of our portfolio. But um, you know, what Canberra does, what the economy does. It's out of your hands. What APRA does, what the banks do, can't do anything about it. And, and you're also, but and I think the biggest ace in your sleeve, so to speak, is that you're looking at this from a 20-year time period, not yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's you know, it's it's important to always look forward, what's next, what's the future. But, you know, if you look at our portfolio, it's, it's great growth, you know, and, and whether or not we were extremely lucky that we bought in the right places at the right time, or whether or not we'll bloody smart and understand what we're doing as a property investor to buy in the right place at the right time. You know, it's, it depends how you choose the frame. Probably it. a combination of everything, really. Maybe, you know, and uh, if there's any luck in there, I'm happy to claim it. But uh, I like to think also some of it was um, was good strategy as well and good advice. You know, you guys supported this as, uh, through the period of, um, you know, our portfolio acquisition. So, you know, they're the things that's in your control. That's the stuff that's always been in our control. Yeah, to execute or not. Execute or not. So... So right now it's it's a show about nothing, you know. It's it's you know we're not doing anything. We're just always looking to 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 refine the portfolio and make sure it's as has the best cash flow position as much as possible. Cash flow and liquidity. Cash flow and liquidity, you yeah. know. And we're not going to be forced to sell. So really, it's not really going to matter too much. And sometimes this is the most dangerous part of a person's journey, so to speak, mm. when investing in, in property is when they're doing nothing because investors get bored. Yeah, and they're looking for the next contract so to speak yeah uh and sometimes you just gotta 
maintain, consolidate for a period of time, whether it be one month, six months, six years, whatever it may be, whatever the household income uh, dictates, uh, and just be ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I'm not really too worried. You know, I, I can't see how bad it would get for us to need to to actually have to liquidate our portfolio. You know, like we can cover the cash flow concerns, and uh, even if the whole portfolio, and we've actually priced it up uh, as a scenario, if it all went to uh, principal and interest, you know. How much more is it going to hold? It costs us to hold it, you know. But it still comes down to good management cash flow, you know. Like it might go up, it might cost us more to hold the portfolio from a, a mortgage perspective. But um, you know, we have control over how the properties are presented, what sort of tenants are in there, uh, when leases are coming to rent. be expired, Correct. what rent we're charging. You know, these are all things within our control. And often it's things, you know, I could probably do that a bit better with our portfolio. Sometimes it's just sort of ticks along and you yeah. don't really know. Like, but, and that's, been, a, that's a good thing, but it's yeah. also a dangerous thing. Well, there's been times where I've gone, well, how come rent hasn't come in for this? And, and the, the product manager say, well, yeah, because no one's been in there for three weeks. And I go, well, why don't you tell me? And they go, we did. And I go, <laughs> okay, well, why don't you try and why don't you call me again? And we've well, we already told you there's no one in there. I know. You know, it's, and that's the, so whose responsibility is it? You know, it's, it comes down to good pro- property, well, property management. Well, it does come down to good property management, but I also think that, you know, we need to remember that, they, the property manager works for you and you've got to manage the managers. You just yeah. can't you know, release 100% responsibility to those that work for you, so to speak. You need to be the squeaky wheel. You need to have a, an absolute strangling grip on your numbers in your portfolio mm. at any other time. One of the challenges we have though, Steve, and maybe it's a, an interesting topic is um, not all property managers are created equal. I have no. a couple of people that manage our properties who I find a real pain in the ass. I won't mention names, but um, there, there always seems to be a problem in a couple of the properties that, that, that we have, right? Maintenance needed, trees falling down, dog poo on the front lawn, they, they, people can't pick it up, gardens need trimming, all this sort of stuff, right? And it's always an issue, always an issue. And, I, and some of these properties, it feels as though I've never had a full week's rent, right? Because someone's got their nose in a trough trying to take money out of it, whether it's an electrician or a tradesman or it's a, it's a something or other, right? Like- are they just crap properties and they're hungry or is that just bad property management? No, I think it's um, – and I know the property you're talking about but mm. I, I th- and, the ma- and the manager uh, and they've got one of mine as well. And I think it's how you – a lot of the time how you set up to begin with with that particular property manager mm. um, because some property managers are more heavy on maintenance and repairs than others because – we need to remember the property management is the worst job in the world, and you know, and I, and I mean no disrespect to property managers. That's it's a hard, a hard job, job. You are dealing with vendors x amount every day and x amount of tenants every day, and the tenants have got maintenance requests being th- you know, all day every day, and then you've got the landlord that says, "I don't want to pay it." So the easiest way to get things off their desk is just to punt it straight to the landlord and hope that they say yes, mm. uh, and then they can put the work, work order through and get it done. A lot of the time, the property managers go, "Look, you know." Do it, do it, do it, do it when you don't have to do it. Now, clearly an emergency is an emergency. A safety issue is a safety issue and you don't want to be that slumlord. You need to address those issues. Uh, but setting setting the rules with your with your manager is important and, and don't forget that they work for you, not the other way around. Mm. They're not doing you so a favour managing your property. It doesn't feel like that property. sometimes, right? Like, you know, sometimes Correct. you feel and, – and you get professional tenants as well, right? Who, you, yes, you who, do. Who, who know the game, right? And So how do you work out – whether or not it's something you need to do or something you just go, no, go away. As in, oh, can you put new um, mesh on uh, a screen door because mm. uh, some mosquitoes are going through a little hole and it's biting our dog? Like, what do you do? Just go, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, I, mean? I, I so, do. I, I'm just trying to really, be able to answer someone, that. Someone's really trivial stuff where you just go, you know, no. Well, look, if it's trivial and it's not making a difference, you know, well, my answer is is no, I'll get mm. to it when I can get to it. You yeah, know, The budget doesn't allow me to carry out that sort of a, a maintenance request at this point in time. Yeah. But if it's something that's going to affect my tenant drastically, I'll certainly consider doing it based on the cost. If it's a safety issue, I'll do it immediately. So if safety is it should be prioritised, right? Like every time yeah. I, I turn off the hot water tap, I get a small electrocution. Probably something you need. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put that. <laughs> you don't want to put that off. Yeah, um, or a cracked, even a cracked PowerPoint. Yeah. And depending on which state you're in, you, you won't even get the electricity turned on unless those sorts of things are repaired immediately. Mm. Um, but also, depending on where that property is in its um, in its plan. So let's imagine that we're about to get it refinanced or a, another valuation. Well, then I'll be taking care of some of those cosmetic things that perhaps the tenant has asked for in the past. Yeah, that will make a difference to the value to the valuation, or if the property is vacant. 
it's a good time to do the repairs and maintenance because it's empty mm. and it'll attract a, a new tenant quicker. On the other side of the coin, though, however, don't ever be tempted to carry out major repairs and maintenance or even a renovation whilst a tenant's in there. That's just asking for trouble. Yeah, we'd never done that with our portfolio. No, you know, the only time. No. The last, the last reno we did, and, and we actually spoke about it on, on the Smart Property Investment Show, was um, the property we have in Kingston. I think we, we dropped about 25 grand on that, um, like doing some essential repairs, like increasing balustrade heights so it's up to standard from a safety perspective, you know, some dodgy plaster work that needed repairing plus, you know, a lot of cosmetic stuff. But we mm. waited until people moved out. We spent a month spent the money doing, doing it, it. Yep. doing it, and now we've got much better tenant in there as a result of it. So that was the right time to do the reno. And often, you know, proactive versus reactive renovations, uh, it's going to come down to where it is in the cycle, you know. And 100% getting back to uh, furthermore to the question, though, how do you handle the property manager? I'm in constant communication with them. So for me personally, because I'm a little bit tight that way and a bit of a control freak, mm. they don't spend one cent of my money unless I give them the go-ahead. Yeah, My phone is on 24-7. You can get me in one way, shape or form. So I don't want this $500, you know, can spend $500 of your money without really contacting you scenario. That's just, that's do, just do, not do you give them a, Do you give them a float though to say if there's anything nothing. happens? No, nothing. Nothing. Even 50 bucks. Nothing. You know, oh, the, the, the tap's leaking. Can we send a no. Uh, no? Nothing. Emergencies are different. If the house is on fire, they can they they can do whatever they need. But yeah. I, I, not one cent. Hmm. Okay. You should consider. You reckon? Oh yeah. No, they, actually, they, not, they, not they, you. they normally can. They, they they normally contact me for anything, right? Like, can we send a plumber around? Why is that? Uh, because uh, the hot water system's leaking everywhere. Okay, sure. I normally yeah. just go if it's any more than a hundred bucks. Let me know. Nah, see, I, I won't do that because I, I'm I want to. You know, once again, no disrespect, property managers, so don't be smashing me. Mm. I want them trained to the way I think that. Well, no, this landlord, you're just not going to. He's just not going to say yes. He's going to want a reason. So, but the that, taps are drifting. Yeah. Can I send out a plumber? No, you can send out a handyman. That's fine. But if if the hot water ta- if the hot water thing's leaking, right? Can we send a plumber out to to inspect it? And you go out there, and the plumber goes. He looks at it and goes. It's stuffed, or it might just be a valve needs cleaning or somewhere other. He calls up, he, he leaves there, calls up the product manager saying, Yes, I need to spend an hour's work on it. It's 150 bucks. And then they call you and say it's 150 bucks, and you say yes. And then they call the plumber back and say, Yes, again, it's you've been approved $150. Then he's got to go out there in two days' time to find a time to go and fix it. You know, like, isn't it better that he just goes out there and it's a real quick job to fix it on the spot rather than the, the headache oh, and rigmarole? There's, there's, there'd be reasons for that. But- yeah. When you've got a, a large portfolio and if they're all doing that, suddenly that 150 turns into a you lot. know $5,500 yeah. if they're all doing it at the same time. Mm. And because the, the way I treat my portfolio in, in when I first started, it was quite hands-on, very much like yourself, uh, I tend to know what things cost. So if a plumber's saying to me, if we're on that, you know, you've got a pressure relief valve, it's going to cost you $800 to re- replace yeah, or $600. No like I know straight away what they are to purchase and what they are in terms of labour, not mm. because – of any other reason that I do it every other every other day, not myself, but I know what things cost, yeah. and uh, that way I can keep a grip on the on the outgoings. Do you reckon um, property managers fight for you in negotiation with trade people, or do you reckon they just take it as it is? Because um, sometimes you hear property managers sort of getting a bit of a take on the way as well, right? Does you that, do. Does that happen? Does that yeah, happen much? it does happen, and it's it's, um, it's not cool. I, and I think if you if you're if you have a, a the notion that that's happening, you should ask your property manager straight up because anything that they get should be full disclosure. So uh, it's okay for them to make a margin off the trade. Not or? a margin, no, not no. a margin ever. So if if it if the if the trade is charging a hundred and they're and they're charging you one hundred and ten, then that's just that's just not on. That's bad business, and that's a prerequisite in my belief, just to their persona, the type of person they are. So that's why you pay five, six, seven, eight percent of your rent is for them to manage that process, not to make a margin of so. Yeah. Because you hear about it sometimes. You know? Yeah. Well, and furthermore to that, sometimes if you check your managing agency agreement and a lot of them, there'll be this one little one word difference uh, in the agreement, which is, let's just say it's 8%, mm. collecting 8% of all monies or rent collected. And there's a big difference between those two so, so words. Eight, eight, so they would take 8% of a hundred dollar bill for a plumber could be doubtful, yeah. but it's it, but it more might be along insurance claims. It might yeah. be water collection for um, yeah, on the rates or, or whatever it may be. So you just need to really identify your, your agency agreement because yeah. it's not just about the percentage; mm. it's about the little things. 
behind it. And once again, property management is the toughest job and they deserve every cent they get. Yeah. You just want full disclosure on what they're going to get and you, you want to be able to have the communication with your property manager and you need to have lots of it. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, this is not supposed to be negative about property managers. We are very pro property management. Yeah. And so that, you know, we every single property we have is managed by a property manager. We have some exceptional property managers um, who – do the heavy lifting for us in our portfolio is a very important part of our uh, asset management. They're an essential part of your mitigation. Yeah. And for those people that perhaps um, want to manage their own properties, mm. it's the worst thing that you could no, do. Use a property manager, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And I think we just talked about some really good things to check. You know, we always pour over our management agreements, make sure they're all tickety boo. And I don't think I've ever had any problems with it, to be honest with you. So, you know, mm. by and large, it's always been good. Every now and then you get a frustration, but um, it's just the, That's part of just the, game. the way yeah, it works, no, right? right? Yep. It's just the way it works. All right, good. So um, let's check in again in a month or so's time, see what we're up to. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, we're not, no pre-approval. We're not buying at the moment. We're not doing anything. We're just uh, watching what's going on. We're preparing for what could potentially a time of opportunity again in uh Sydney, Melbourne markets. So when that happens, I don't know. Might be might be other markets. Might be other markets. Yeah. Might be six months away. Might be a year away. Might be two years away. So we'll work that out when we get there. But um, remember to check it out. Smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Any questions at all uh, around our portfolio, you can email the team, and uh, we'll, we'll try and cover them on air. Editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Uh, if you like social media and that's how you like to get your information, uh, just search Smart Property HQ. Uh, like us, love us, follow us, um, and uh, you'll make sure that you're the first to know what's going on in property. And please, um, just a favour, a personal favour, if you can just leave, uh, if you like what we're doing here on the Smart Property Investment Show, uh, please leave a, a review wherever you're listening to this right now. Five stars, great, if you like what we're doing, and, and a bit of a comment, as I've mentioned beforehand, it's just not me who sits here behind the microphone. It's a big team of talented media people here who help produce not only smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, but also the podcast. So, uh, Steve, thanks, mate. I've enjoyed it. Pleasure. Uh, always good. Sorry if you feel as though this hasn't been very... Uh, fruitful this conversation around anything intangible but i think this is uh representative of what it means to be a property investor it's okay to do nothing and a representation of a large part of the market at this point in time absolutely uh, we'll be back again next time until then bye bye the information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon before making any investment insurance tax property or financial planning decision you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.